Well, the UFC is back in the great state of Michigan for the first time since 2010. This is their third trip overall. Of course, back on that evening, Rampage Jackson defeated Leona Machida in the main event of UFC 123 via split decision. BJ Penn defeated Matt Hughes. Edson Barbosa made his UFC debut. This time around, though, they're bringing a title fight to Detroit Rock City. They're coming to the brand new Little Caesars Arena for the first time. It just opened up. And I think a lot of people would agree that this card, UFC 218, which is just hours away now, is a lot better than that one seven years ago in November of 2010. Hello again, everyone. I'm Mario Hawani. This is the UFC 218 MMAfighting.com preview video. And for the first time ever, making his preview video debut, one of the newest members of the team, Canada's own, Alexander K. Lee is joining us. How about this? Welcome, hello. Alexander. Hello, How are you? Hello. Uh, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling great. It's been a great week in Detroit so far. Super excited for these fights, as you said. Looks like one of the best cards of the year, I'd say. Low yes. key. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if everyone knows this card's going on, but it's a really good one. And I and I hate to do all this PR for the UFC, but I hope people tune in. What do you mean? Everyone knows this card is going on. They say it's sold out. There's a lot of buzz. There's a line forming up for the ceremonial weigh-ins. Oh. You've been here since Tuesday. I have. You're not feeling the buzz in the city? I'm starting to feel it now. Now that you mentioned, again, I, I saw that line up there, uh, and you know, we did the media day, we did the, we did the, the workouts and everything, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely an excitement building, and we got a big title fight. Yes. You know, Aldo Holloway too. Yes. That's a big deal. I mean, I know it's not the main event that that was, you know, we all they, we all thought we were going to get with Edgar and Holloway, but I mean, this is Jose Aldo. This is one of the best fighters of all time still. You know, I know he's coming off that loss to Holloway. It was somewhat definitive, but I mean, you gotta you gotta be excited to see him back in action. Okay, so let me ask you this. Holloway Edgar 1, Holloway Aldo 2. Which fight you like better? Were you disappointed when the switch happened or were you actually more excited? Well, in full disclosure, I'm, I'm a huge Frankie Edgar fan. You know, I'm a non-biased journalist, but sure. I, I'm a big Frankie Edgar fan. Obviously, it would have been nice to see a fresh matchup as well. That's also important, I feel. But again, there's no short of, of intrigue with Aldo. Uh, I'm a big Aldo fan as well, a big fan of Holloway. I mean, how can you not be a fan of these guys if you enjoy fighting? So while I think the uh, Edgar Holloway matchup was slightly more intriguing, there's a lot to like about the one that we ended up getting. Okay. Um, so let's talk about this fight. This is a rematch, of course, as you mentioned. Uh, they first met back in June. That's when Max Holloway won his 11th straight fight, which is just amazing. It's almost, it almost feels like he's a bit underrated still at this point, and he's won that many fights against some of the best featherweights in the world. He unified the featherweight titles, thought that he was going to move on and fight a guy like Frankie Edgar and sort of you know, begin his journey as champion, but he has to do it again against Jose Aldo. Now, a lot of people seem to forget that Aldo actually won the first two rounds in many people's eyes of that fight, but he was criticized afterwards for not using his leg kicks as much in the fight. Do you expect to see a different approach from Aldo this time around? I mean, you have to believe he's going to use the leg kicks more. I think there might have been health reasons the first time that he didn't use them. It could have been a strategy again. You know, when you're in there, who knows? Maybe the strategy was to use leg kicks going in, and then in your middle of the fight, you're feeling different. You said he was winning anyway. Maybe he thought he didn't need them. But uh, in the end, it may have cost him, as he did end up losing by TKO in the third round. Sure. Um, so definitely I fully expect him to be better than last time, but I also expect Holloway to be better than last time. So depending on how much you think each guy improved since, or decline, depending on you know uh, how much you think age matters, um, and also the short notice that Aldo had to prepare. This one could end even earlier. I mean, I'm expecting it to be more competitive, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it ended in the second round uh, for either man, actually, just depending how how yeah. it goes down. Yeah. Holloway seemed to imply that he was kind of weathering the storm in that first fight, that he was letting Aldo do his thing, and then he would pour it on towards the end. It was like towards the end of the second, and then the third when he really did his damage. Do you buy that? I can somewhat believe that. I would. I definitely would not refer to Holloway as a slow starter, uh, but he didn't. He'd never. He'd also never been facing. He's faced a lot of great opponents. I think when you face an all-time great like Jose Aldo, who again, remember, was also uh, carrying the undisputed belt into that, uh, into that uh, matchup. I mean, Holloway had the interim belt, was right. essentially the challenger. So I don't think. I think he gave Aldo a lot of respect, and I think he's going to give Aldo a lot of respect here as well. But knowing that he's beaten him, I think that gives him an edge. I think he'll come out a little quicker. And I think we will see him, if it does go three rounds again, three rounds or more, I think we'll see him take at least one of the first two or three rounds and not uh, give up the first two rounds as he seemed to have done last time. Interesting to note that that event I spoke about at the, uh, the top of the preview, UFC 123, on that night, Jose Aldo was essentially crowned UFC featherweight champion. They held a sort of 
I don't know, subdued ceremony in the middle of the octagon, empty arena, just the media was there, and he was the WEC featherweight champion. They had just announced that they were merging the two companies, and Dana White was in the middle of the octagon and gave him the belt. So he comes back to Detroit. Of course, that was a little outside of Detroit. That was in uh, Auburn Hills, Michigan, to be exact. But he comes back here as a challenger for the first time in a very long time in a, in a title fight, um, in an official UFC featherweight title fight. Do you feel like maybe, you know, not having that pressure, not having to defend the title, you know, Everyone, it seems like you know he's an underdog going into this fight. It feels like this is part of the, you know, Max Holloway coronation. That maybe this is actually a good thing. This is a good setting for Jose Aldo. This has been the first time in a while where it feels like some people are counting out Aldo before the fight has happened. I guess even in the first fight, I don't recall the odds. I can't recall. If, I feel like Holloway might have been slightly favored. I actually can't remember. But regardless of what, the, but the perception I think was that you know Aldo had as you know it was, it was at least even right. This time, Holloway's defending again. He knocked him out last time and you do feel like it's leading in, in Holloway's direction. Aldo has never struck me as the kind of guy who is too, gets too rattled, though I'm sure people will point to what happened with the McGregor fight and how the buildup might have led to that sure. calamitous ending for him. But as far as from what we've seen these, this week, he seems his usual calm self. He's happy, he's smiling, he's, he's uh, you know, handling interviews the same way. Um, I, I don't know if he's feeling less pressure, but I'd say he seems as relaxed as normal, and, and that could be a good thing. Um, also worth noting, uh, we had the official weigh-ins earlier Friday morning, and Max Holloway looked like his usual sort of gaunt, dehydrated self. Uh, it did seem like he was having trouble speaking. Aldo seemed to be in a bit of pain, uh, stepped on the scale, initially weighed 146, and while they were trying to figure out what to do, he actually was kneeling over. Then they brought out the towel and he made 145 after he dropped his shorts. Did what you, see, you, know, what you saw on Friday morning, did that change your opinion on the fight at all? It didn't change my opinion too much, but I will say, as you mentioned, him leaning over onto that scale, it, it was a striking image. And if I, honestly, if I knew, probably if I knew him more personally, uh, it would have affected me. But I think we've seen fighters come in in pretty rough shape on the weigh-ins and still perform very well the next night. Again, he's always had a problem with the cut. Um, and again, Holloway also, he looked, you know, like we said, you said typically kind of a little bit drawn out, yeah. but still fine. So. I don't want to say whether they're equally diminished or or if that's if that's going to be a factor, but at the same time, I, I it didn't bother me that much. Okay. I, I think he'll rehydrate properly as he usually does, though it will raise questions. I think regardless of the results of whether he should still consider that move to 150, he's, he's still relatively young, yeah. so 155 has to be an option, right? Yeah, we'll see what happens. Maybe this is his last shot at the UFC featherweight title after all these years, which is pretty amazing. All right, official prediction. Who do you got? Max Holloway, Jose Aldo. Oh, I didn't know we were doing these predictions. Yeah. I'm going to go with Holloway. I, I, uh, in this case, I'm just pretty much favoring youth and the guy who seems to have less MMA mileage on him. Skill-wise, I really feel like Aldo is as good as anyone in the featherweight division, almost as good as anyone in the UFC still. But, uh, you know, the old adage, uh, father time waits for no man. And again, he's not old, but he has been fighting for a very long time, and it just feels like... Max has the youth and the athleticism, and he's fresher, and I think he's going to take this one. So you're going with second-round finish, right? I think we could see a second-round finish, okay. or I'll say this. I'm going to, I'm going to double down, which is okay. an awful thing to do. Second-round finish or a convincing five-round decision win for Holloway. All right. Let's move along now and talk about Alistair Overeem versus Francis Ngannou. When this fight was first announced, I think a lot of people were very excited. Two big boys going at it. Big test for Ngannou. I did hear some people say maybe it's a little early for Nganu. He hasn't fought since January. He was supposed to fight in September. JDS gets provisionally suspended. So there's a layoff there, but also it's a big step up in competition going from Andre Arlovsky to Alistair Overeem. Do you subscribe to that theory? It is an enormous step up in competition. On the other hand, I'm not exactly sure what other options were available to him that wouldn't be like a step back, given the amount of steam this guy has from some of these finishes. He looks incredible. The finishes have been incredible. You know, I know people thought maybe he could have been hot shot into a fight with Stipe. That would have been definitely been way too soon. If Cain Velasquez were healthy and for some reason he ended up fighting Cain, that also would have been way too soon. It feels like uh, Overeem is right in that sweet spot of a guy with a great name, a still a very legitimate challenge, but also someone and guy who could beat given his power and the fact that Overeem has been knocked out many times. I think the most among uh, all UFC heavyweights. So I'm not going to give my pick yet, but I will say the matchup makes sense. Okay. Ganu 5-0 in the UFC. The UFC is certainly behind him. They're putting him in commercials. Uh, he's in the new Reebok commercial. Also just signed a deal with Body Armor. And so you know the UFC is sort of pegging him as a potential face of the franchise, so to speak, in the future. And so he has to get by Alistair Overeem here. And like I said, Nganu hasn't fought in quite some time. He says it's not getting past the first. Overeem says it's getting 
to the second, but then not to the third. Also interesting to note, and Ganu says he hasn't been told that if he wins this fight, he's getting a title shot. Overeem says he's been told that if he wins this fight, he's getting a title shot. Let's just ask the question, should the winner of this fight be next in line for a UFC heavyweight title fight? The winner of this fight should absolutely be eligible okay. to be in line for a title fight. I mean, by logic, absolutely. We know nothing is guaranteed, yeah. but if there's a if there's an exciting finish, you know, because a lot of people were saying, and and he, he was asked about this during the week, that if Overeem had finished for Doom in their trilogy bout, maybe that would have already put him in a title shot, uh, but he didn't. You know, it went to a majority decision, I believe. So it wasn't the most satisfying ending, though. Though I thought he won the fight, but it was close. Uh, and Ganu, if he knocks him out. I would not be surprised at all. The, again, the guy's on such a hot streak. He has such a look that they want to push. Yeah. He, he seems to be good with the media, very good with the fans uh, at the open workouts. The fans loved him for a guy who's, only, who's been fighting for such a short time. He definitely gets a title shot. Over him, I would say uh, less of a chance. But logically, should he? Yes. But I'd say Ngannou stands to gain the most from this fight. Yeah, he is a fresh matchup. Over him lost to Stipe back at UFC 203. All right, so who gets it done? Who ends up being correct, Ngannou with his prediction or Overeem with his? I'm going to contradict what I just said okay. with the main event about youth prevailing because Ngannou, I think he's 31. He is younger than Overeem by about Although six Overeem years. questions that. He wants, to see, he wants to see some papers. I heard that. I heard yeah. uh, a birth to Overeem, yes, uh, stirring up some trouble. Yeah. But I think also Overeem, uh, sorry, pardon me, Ngannou really has not faced anyone as good as Overeem. I mean, Arlovsky, yes, he's got the credentials, but he feels far past his days as a UFC champion. He's, he had a nice run when he came back, but now obviously seems to be back on the decline again. He's very up and down. Overeem, I mean, not too long ago, knocked up Dos Santos. Again, he just beat Verdum. His skill set is is so is still so um, wide, and he's such a, a such a great, great striker. I think a much better striker than Ngannou is ready for. I'm going to lean towards Overeem. All right. I don't know if I can say he's going to knock him out, but I'm leaning towards an Overeem okay. win. I like it. A bold pick. Let's move along now to Justin Gaethje versus Eddie Alvarez. Uh, the violent championship of the world is on the line. People have been foaming at the mouth since this fight was initially reported back in July. They coach the ultimate fighter. They say all the right things. The fans love it. They're very fan-friendly fighters, uh, very exciting fighters, at times reckless fighters. Is there any chance in your mind that this fight does not live up to the enormous expectations that have been put on it? Oh, no, I have to be Debbie Downer now. Um, I love Eddie. Eddie uh, has been very good to the media this week. He's a great, he's usually a great interview as long as you know you yeah. have questions and you engage him properly. So he's been saying all the right things. I mean, wanting to be the UFC's most violent man, that is, that really is an awesome title. Yeah. And, and he said one that people would care about more than uh, the current interim situation and, you know, Conor McGregor having lightweight belt. So it would be amazing if, if it turns into the fight that we all dream is going to be. I'm a little afraid oh. it's gamesmanship. And we kind of see the Eddie that fought, you know, Cerrone and Pettis and, oh, no. and eked out wins. And again, this is just this is strictly theoretical because um, he's been saying all the right things. Yeah. And we know from what we saw from his last two fights, well, I mean, the McGregor fight, he engaged him and went poorly for him. But the Poirier fight was turning into an all-time classic yeah. before the unfortunate, uh, you know, accidental legal knee and uh, no contest. So it did look like he was going back to his, his free swing way. So don't believe me. I mean, that's just my theory. I want to say for the fans' sake, we are going to get that, that classic brawl. But there is that doubt in your mind because he has done it in his UFC run, right? Yeah, and, and, and frankly, for his sake, and again, not to be negative, but for his sake, I hope he considers, you know, if he feels that power a little bit and gets worried, he's been in a lot of battles. Sure. And he has he has so many other ways to win fights that I hope he, he doesn't shy away from necessarily wrestling, clinching up, maybe mucking up the fight a little bit as opposed to just wanting to stand and bang with Gaethje. That Gaethje, boy, his power is, is undeniable. He's one of the deadliest knockouts, uh, knockout artists out there today. Okay, so you say that about Eddie, but would it behoove Justin Gaethje to fight a smarter fight this time around, a little less reckless? I mean, it's something to do that against a Michael Johnson or a Luis Palomino, with all due respect to them. Eddie Alvarez is different as well, and the talk has always been at some point his style is going to bite him in the butt. At some point, it's going to come back to haunt him. Does he need to, to be a little smarter in this fight? He might have to. I mean, again, the Michael, so the Justin Gaethje-Michael Johnson fight, he, he got rocked. Yeah. I mean, he got rocked real bad. I mean, he's known for having a great chin, but he got hit on the button. He, he looked like he was out of it. And again, if it wasn't for his superhuman resilience, who knows? We might be, we might be talking about Michael Johnson versus Eddie Alvarez right now. Sure. We don't know. Do I think he should fight smarter? Again, like with Eddie? Yeah. Do I think he will? I don't know. He's, he's got great wrestling as well, so I, I don't think he'll be afraid of, uh, of takedowns. And if he keeps this one on the feet, I can't see him going for takedowns of his own or, or wanting to muck it up. I think he's going to want to bang and, uh, and deliver what, was, what has been promised so far. Okay, so what do you think? 
what goes down? Is it a boring three-round decision win for Eddie Alvarez? Is it the firefight that everyone's dreaming about? What do you say? I think it is going to turn into a great fight, despite my skepticism. Okay. And I'm actually going with Gaethje. So, you know, I've kind of split the difference between saying the younger guy's going to win here and yeah, the, yeah. The, younger, the older guy's going to win here. This time, I'm going to, again going with the younger guy, just because Eddie has been in so many battles. I have to wonder how much mileage is left on that on that chin. I hope he doesn't see this. He's going to murder me at some point if he <laughs> sees me later. Uh, but I'm I'm leaning towards Gaethje, and I think Gaethje is going to get the finish. Wow. And then that makes the lightweight division picture really interesting because you've got this fresh face and it's kind of stalled. And Conor McGregor has actually given him a, a nod of approval. Remember after that win over Michael Johnson, Conor tweeted about him. And uh, that's not something that he's often done in the past with some of the top guys at 155. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that title picture if Justin Gaethje does prevail as you just predicted. Okay, two more quick ones that I want to ask you about. Uh, Sergio Pettis versus Henry Cejudo. We were supposed to see this fight back in May at UFC 211. A great fight. Two of the very best flyweights not named Demetrius Johnson. Uh, the winner could very well make a case for a title shot, especially if you're Sergio Pettis. Of course, there's the TJ Dillashaw situation. But what are you expecting out of this fight? First of all, I love this fight. Both guys have looked spectacular uh, in, in, in their recent fights. I think it's one of the hardest fights to call. I would say, I would say for me, maybe the hardest fight to call on the main card. Uh, though again, I think they're all they're all there's arguments to be made for all the fighters on it. I'm gonna lean towards Pettis, I think, and I'm just making that pick on the spot. I've not. I, I've been waffling between the two. I think Pettis is, is peaking at the right time. Uh, not to say that Hudo hasn't looked great, but I think Pettis is peaking at the right time, and I think he's going to have just a little bit of a speed advantage that might make the difference in a fight that is going to go the distance. So Hudo looked great in his last fight against Wilson Hayes, and his new striking style has really seemed to be paying off, but in the end, you're going with Sergio Pettis. I think it's Sergio Pettis, and I think Sergio is going to set himself up for a title shot, okay. depending on what happens, obviously yeah. with DJ and TJ, that ongoing drama. Um, but at least he'll again, he'll be he'll be in that line should that fight not happen, or should that fight happen as something, and you know TJ maybe uh, not be able to make it for some reason. So I'm going with yeah, Sergio Pettis for the win and future title shot. Wow, he's been somewhat reluctant to call out DJ and to really assert himself as the number one guy. We'll see what happens on the mic if he does in fact win the fight. And lastly, Michelle Waterson returning. As the siren is telling us to hurry up here, Michelle Watterson returning after her loss back in April to the now strawweight champion Rosna Muniz, who could have predicted that. And she's fighting Tisha Torres, who's also talking about title shot as well. Big fight for both of them. Who do you have? Torres' last fight was really surprising because she got a finish. Yeah. First time in her yeah. pro career, she's finished someone. And, she, and, and it was a good one, too. Uh, but I am going to lean towards Watterson. I think, I think uh, Watterson, you know, you, you love that killer instinct. You love the aggression she always brings. I do feel like she's just a little bit better in the striking and that she'll be able to, she will be able to keep it on the feet. Um, so I'm leaning towards Watterson. Again, another close one. It wouldn't surprise me to go either way, either Torres' decision, but, I, but I'm, in this case, I'm thinking a submission win for Michelle Watterson. Wow. How about the rookie, A.K. Lee, coming out strong? Great job, my man. Well done. Way to represent Canada. Yeah, yeah, we gotta do it. We gotta do it for up north, Ariel. You know, yeah. we gotta show these guys how it's done. All due respect to our other peers who have done these, but come on, we can do it the Canadian way. We, we do it with confidence. You know, we're ready. First time in MMAfighting.com history that two Canadians who are working for MMAfighting.com take part in the previous show. We've had other Canadians moonlight, if you will, but this is history right here. History is being made here in Detroit outside the brand new Little Caesars Arena. Again, third time the UFC visits Michigan, first time in this building. It's a great card, one of the best of the year. As A.K. Lee said, he's not a liar. He doesn't just spew this stuff hyperbole. No, he doesn't work for the UFC, as he said. He's not part of the PR staff. He's here to tell you how it is, and it is true. It's one of the great cards. Can't wait for it. It's coming up in less than 24 hours from now. We'll be there with our usual fight night coverage, so stick around for that. For now, we'll say goodbye from frigid Detroit, Michigan. For AK Lee, Casey, Esther, I'm Ariel. We'll see you Saturday after the fights.